reckoning with the Jews from Old Testament to New Testament, searching scriptures, qualifying scriptures, telling them that this Jesus is the Christ. They refused. So don't tell me about controversy. I have not time to listen to your controversy. I have not time to listen to your wrong beliefs. Not at one time. Paul left. Who will get there? That true gospel which can empower you to demolish at times uh, when we speak of a tree which I cut in the middle of a home there was a man that man was still alive he said to me, Mr. Moyo, I can see you are praying. But let me tell you, there are things which were dug and placed in this yard, which are underneath here. What are you going to do with them? In this yard, it was dug. And there are ritual things which were put here. And they were buried here. And they are covered here. Where you are standing. What are you going to do with it? Because now you are bringing Jesus. Moyo. Lapa uleli kaya lapo mikona. Pans lapo nisabatini kwa kechwa. Kwa fagu izinto. Ezinzima. Powe na njoba susiza na mshanje ngo chesu. Lezi zinjoe zipansi lapa zia utiwani. And they were listening. Nobody wanted to answer that. Not even one. Apu. Unjo tano se vezi infisho. Uti ngapa spizu chesu. Pansi wuzile zinjoe zikechelewe. No wonder why the snake was finding its way into the family home. No wonder. Born of flesh, you will act like that. Carnal mind. There is a true gospel which will cause you to demolish the empire the empire of the devil. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel recognize beyond all doubt, acknowledge assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, the Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Foolish people will tell you three in one, two in one. Very foolish. Air in scriptures. They will tell you, but they are three in one is the same. There's nothing same. The scripture says, therefore let the whole house of Israel Recognize beyond all doubt and acknowledge assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Messiah whom you have crucified was made both. Not that he has got something inside to be two, to make it three. This Lord was made both Lord and Christ. The Messiah, this Jesus, 
whom you crucified, was made both. Operating as a child, operating as God, him being one, he was made both. Both, P-O-T-H. Acts chapter 2, verse number 36. Now when they heard this, they were stung. They were pricked, cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, special messengers, brother, what shall we do? Ah, Let me tell you. The lady I spoke to who has the roots in destroying my wife. Nothing him chair and give Vangeli Loko. What did I mean you fundi? Some of you fundi Sabani. What changes with your food on cocaine? Cocaine or manga. What did I mean you fundi? Some of you fundi Sabani. Kazama fun who did clean so the seven the way. Wafuna na utali chwala ni sewe inda, which is correct. But what is the intention behind? Now when they heard this, they were stung to the heart. And they say to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Upita yaba chelu tonkulukula watatu wabako Wenga yetua Wenga 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 wafundis Abafundi Pita achiwa uza kuti Nyayana yana, yana jova watatu wa hiko Anga asiriega Panga pane wamwe Vapostora wipapo Vaka tere na nyayachu then people asked, what shall we do? This is the first time that we hear this. So what shall we do? It cuts us. It pricks our hearts. So what shall we do? So you are telling us that this Christ was made both Lord and Christ. Not two in three. Not two in one. Not three in one, but he was made both Lord and Christ. So what shall we do? And Peter answered them, repent. Change your views. <laughs> if you want to be a demolisher of empires, change your views. Change the way how you see things. Change. The way how you have been analyzing things change. Peter says, change the way how you see things. Your perception must change. Don't consider them to be the same. The Messiah was made both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom you crucified, he was both Lord in Christ, not two in one, not three in one. And Peter answered them, repent, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of and release from your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then you shall be born of the Spirit. You demolish nothing because the devil knows the truth. 
surprising the devil knows that God is one. But you have no knowledge that God is one. But you still want to destroy the empire. The devil knows that what you're talking about does not exist. In the name of Jesus, fire to fire, uh, I break every altar. Jenna, you break nothing until you know the truth, until you're born into the spirit. Let's break my altars. We're breaking altars. We touch you, break my altar. Don't break. You broke nothing. You broke nothing. Until you know the true gospel, we shall transfer you to a point where if the grace of God is upon you, believing in all righteousness, then you shall be baptized by the Spirit and fire. Then you will enter left, right, left, right into the dungeon to destroy the empire of the devil. You can only receive the Spirit of God when you have changed your perception. When the gospel is being preached, you have an opinion yourself. You have an opinion. And if your opinion is against what I'm telling you here, you are a loser. You are a loser. You live once, not twice. There is only one chance during the time when you are still alive to present yourself before God in truth. One is born into the spirit through a true gospel. We have read from Acts chapter 2 verse number 36. You cannot be born into the spirit of God being given false doctrine. <laughs> You cannot be born. When we bring this subject of the truth in the gospel, we are speaking of the reality which will cause you to dress in the spirit, to dress in full armor. The subject of the truth The Bible says uh, in the book of Thessalonians from Philippi Paul had gone on to Thessalonica a seaport trade center. Listen. From Philippi Paul had gone on to Thessalonica, a seaport trade center. Here, Paul ministered for three weeks in the Jewish synagogue. He ministered for three weeks in the Jewish synagogue. Preaching to the remnant. Preaching to the Jews. In Silelan. But there were Jews. And the scripture says. This was now a synagogue. No more longer a temple. Yo. Paolo Anoshika. Musanga Norama Judah. Opa Rizagwama Vigima Tatu. 
Asi sanga norema juda. Imba ya juda. Vanonzi ndiwa wanawa Jehova. Yanga ya kutonzi sinago. And he went in there. These were Jews. He started reasoning out of the scriptures from all the testament that, that Jesus was the Christ. Paul wrote, he started to reason with the Jews. It's not easy to convert a person who has been misled for years. Namisangeli chayungungu. Kusasa li konzu chehova. Namisange li pegama tutuzo. Kusasa li se church. The whole family are prophets. Uyabe li tiande unga nanu jesu. Umama, umporofita, uputi. Waba porofita, waba nawaki, waba porofita. Mwini kiyongi, waba porofita. Paul was reasoning with them. The Jewish people in their synagogue qualifying scriptures from Old Testament to the New Testament proving to them that this Jesus was a Christ. Some Jews and many Greek proselytes believed. But the opposition became so strong that Paul found it necessary to leave. Some Jews and proselytes, they agreed. They said, but this is true. But some Jews, there was a serious argument which rose confronting Paul until Paul realized that it was necessary for him to leave them. Giving them the gospel. That true preaching according to the first Thessalonians in verse number 5. For our preaching of the glad tidings, the gospel, came to you not only in word, but also as on inherent power. And in the Holy Spirit and with great conviction. For our preaching, my preaching as I'm preaching, I'm not here to entice you either for gain. No. I'm not here for gain. But I'm very much concerned about your spirit which is perishing while you are in a synagogue. For our preaching of the glad tidings of the gospel about Christ came to you not only in word but also in its inherent power and in the Holy Spirit, and with great conviction and absolute certainty on our part, you know what kind of men we proved ourselves to be among you for yourselves, for your good. Evangelion, the gospel carries a number of very effective elements for our preaching of the gospel came to you not only in word but also in its own inherent power one and in the Holy Spirit two and with great conviction three in absolute satanity for this is the gospel of God. If you want to demolish 
the empire. If you want to deal with the empire, you better receive the truth. You better know the truth. You better understand the reality of salvation. The gospel is not for gain. The gospel is not for gain. If you are going to church that you may start a company, the devil will help you. If you are going to church because you want to be successful, the devil will help you. If you go to church because you want them to approve your logo or your papers so that you excel, the devil will help you. Seek the kingdom of God first. Why do you run for success? Why do you jump for success? Before you seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you all. All means all. I will never give you an account to put money. Money goes via the altar. Those who are in Botswana wait for the conference. You will present your finances on the altar. Those who are in Johannesburg wait for the conference. You will present your money on the altar. Those who are in Bulawayo, wait for the conference. You will present your money on the altar. Those who are in Harare, wait, wait for the conference. You will present your money on the altar. Those in Namibia, you will present your money on the altar. Who places the money if it goes into the account? Wakambo yona kupi iwewe mpiro no tumirwa kutinda uposta. Hamba nika chana man. I stand for the truth. One man said to me in Botswana, Ah, there is a pastor in Harare. He is calling me, he is asking me, where is my seed? I said, block that pastor. There is a pastor who's phoning, calling me a while I'm in Francis Town. He's saying, Where is my seed? Seed, young will goop. You got to block that animal. Block him. Vangera gunye pa magaru wana goop. Rugunye pewa. Some. Women have decided to be pastors, but this is not scriptural. Don't ever try to qualify it from your own thinking. It is not there. Women cannot be pastors. Why to matter? Was Martha a pastor? Women have their role in the kingdom of God. A very unique. Very, very unique. Don't undermine them. But they must not take a role which is not theirs. According to scripture. Genesis to Revelation. I don't know a pastor who is a woman. I don't know one. Help me. I'm a novice. I need to be directed. The gospel of truth will cause you to destroy and demolish the empire of Lucifer. According to Acts chapter 17, 
The scripture says, Now after Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis in Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Acts <laughs> chapter 17 from verse number 1. Now after Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Where we are expected to get in and be saved, it's a synagogue. It has nothing to do with God. At times, I am hesitant. I'm not Pentecostal. I am not Pentecostal. I'm apostolic. I'm not a, I'm not I'm not Pentecostal. I am apostolic. The ministry is apostolic. According to the book of Acts. Not Pentecostal. There is a reason why I'm bringing that distinction, which I may not elaborate now. Demolishing the, emp the empire of the enemy forces. This is a well orchestrated empire of Lucifer. It requires a person who is truly born of the spirit, spirit of God. When Paul came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, Acts chapter 17, verse number 1. And Paul entered, as he usually did, and for three Sabbaths, three weeks, he reasoned and argued with them from the scriptures. Ah! Reasoning with people. You must know that there is a challenge. Ah, you and a man, I will see what I learn here. I will check. I was just serious, not that way, but this is what I know. And they'll bring certain scriptures to try and qualify what is wrong. Scriptures, they never contradict. Scriptures never contradict. Never. Paul was reasoning with them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Opening scriptures, qualifying to them that Jesus is the Christ. Jews for that matter. The remnant, they said no, he is the son. And Paul entered, verse number 2, Acts chapter 17, verse number 2. And Paul entered as he usually did. And for three Sabbaths, he reasoned and argued with them from the scriptures. Argued with them from the scriptures. Trying to put them right. Some, they, even when they are baptism, they will hold you. Vo, vo. Vo three times. You have no understanding of the scripture. Stop it. Do you know who you One, two, three. You have no understanding. I will not see See ya. See ya. Not John the Baptist. Demolishing the empire. You don't demolish an empire unless you are born of the spirit. And for you to be born of the spirit, you must be given the truth. Acts 17 verse number 3. Paul explaining 
them and quoting passages, setting forth and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. And saying this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ, the Messiah. Scripture. Lord Jason Kurumangai, Muyo Christu. Don't give us fractions here, three to one. Three in one. Stupid. Because from Genesis to Revelation, there is no way where it says three in one. No way. Where are you getting that? Where are you getting that? Who called you? If God called you, would have not told you that he, there are three? Never. Those who have been called by God Almighty, they know that there is one God, one law, one faith, one baptism. One watch it amend the sapas. Ndiana Kabudeza. Ndimi no Kangani Sava Mimi. Van Watambura. I want seven trillion zima. See a conza as a pumilut. We are trying things are not happening. Yet they are being misled. From a false doctrine. The doctrine is not about churches. The doctrine is the scripture. There is no church which has a doctrine. Your church does not have a personal doctrine. The doctrine is here. If you have your own doctrine, then you have a problem. Acts chapter 17 verse number 1. Now after Paul and Silas had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Verse number two. And Paul entered, as he usually did, and for three Sabbaths, he reasoned and argued with them from the scriptures. Verse number three. Explaining them and quoting passages, setting forth and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. And saying this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ, the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. But the unbelieving Jews, you are one of them. You say you want to demolish the empire of the devil, failing to get the truth. What weapon are you going to use? Nightmares. Paralysis. When you are asleep. Fighting with people. Spiritual husbands. But the unbelieving Jews, where the truth is spoken, there are people who do not believe. Where the truth is spoken, there are people who will never believe. Just like you. Because you have been wrongly indoctrinated. All what you know is a seed. All what you run after is to go and pay 800 as a seed. Pawn. Taking a church as a pawn. Pawn shop. Don't stop it. You will never overturn these empires with the wrong gospel. These empires, they only they are only defeated by the truth. Where there is not truth, forget. No matter how much you know scriptures. 
No matter how much you 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 see these scriptures, no matter how much you recite them, you do nothing. You do nothing. When Paul says that, uh, he says, but some unbelieving Jews were aroused to jealousy. <laughs> you start to be angry and think you are under attack, yet you are not. Once you realize that what you are preaching is false. I love Abba Zambalese. That's why you hear some foolish pastors. They will call, they will say, Abantu uh, Baami. Abantu Baami. Abantu Baamanda. Abantu Baami. Ula Ulo Muntu and Om Tatanga. Do you have people yourself? Even if you take mud and try to build a human being. Will it become a human being? Maybe if you can do that, you say we have got something that is yours. Abantubami. Msalanuami. Mabasalwanibami. Very foolish. I preach the gospel, I move. But the unbelieving Jews were aroused to jealousy and getting hold of some wicked men, ruffians and rascals and loungers in the marketplace. They gathered together a mob, set the town in an uproar, attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring Paul and Silas out of the people. But Paul had entered Thessalonica, reasoning with them. Reasoning with you is trying to give you an insight of how you can overcome this. Honestly, I must be, I'm privileged. This is a privilege that God has given me. A privilege. To know and to visit and to find in practical deeper empires, deeper empires of the devil. One v one with Lucifer, not demons. One v one with Lucifer himself. The scripture. Says in the book of Romans, the gospel regarding his son was promised through his prophets in sacred scriptures. That's the book of Romans. Irivangeri Ragara. Ravim Biswa Kutitika Tenda Marie is no Sunuguru. The gospel was promised, but not this gospel that we see today. Some say, Ah, Old Testament is not for us. We are of the New Testament. We have no knowledge. The New Testament is concealed in the Old Testament. All that has happened, the New Testament has now been revealed. The New Testament was there from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Christ was there. Romans.
Romans chapter 1, verse number 1. From Paul, a point servant of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, called to be an apostle, a special messenger, set apart to preach the gospel. Good news. Good news of and from God. The good news comes from God. Because it changes your life. This gospel which is coming from God, which he promised in advance, long ago, through his prophets in the sacred scriptures, the gospel was promised that whosoever shall accept the true gospel shall demolish the empire. Don't take the devil lightly. I, I wonder, most people, they just say, ah, the devil, what, what? The devil is so dangerous until Jesus is involved. Then he's weakened. The devil is very dangerous. I'm not exalted, but I'm telling you the truth. Can also to any other sanger and a satan fair fair, which you don't want to cut it and ask in day or whatever. You don't know the day you come across the Lucifer, you will know the truth that it is important that Jesus must be involved. Uza was the clinic, would you call a table would you chess walk over a corner lap? This creature, you will not do anything. But once Jesus is involved, the devil will disappear. Because he knows that he's the creator, the master, the author, and the finisher of everything. The devil does not go against the scriptures. But he makes sure that he will twist you not to follow the truth. Verse number three of Romans chapter one. The gospel regarding his son, who is to the flesh, his human nature was descended from David. Romans chapter one, verse two and three, which he promised in advance long ago through his prophets in the sacred scriptures. The gospel regarding his son, who as to the flesh, his human nature was descended from David. And as to his divine nature, according to the spirit of holiness, divine nature, according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated the son of God in power, in a striking, triumphant, and miraculous manner by his resurrection from the dead, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Messiah, the anointed one. It is, it is through him that we have received grace, God's unmerited favor, and our apostleship to promote obedience to the faith and make disciples for his name's sake among all the nations. We are speaking about the destruction of the empire. Be born of the spirit. Then you can deal with the empire. Because this empire is there. The empire is there. The empire of Lucifer. God laid afresh the terms of the mutual agreement. 
He laid afresh <laughs> the mutual agreement with Israel. Uchiswa kalisa utamise futi zinto ngeyizela esenze labantu nabaka Israel. These worshippers so that they may overcome. If you read in the book of Exodus chapter 34, verse number, verse number 10. God laid afresh the terms of the mutual agreement. Let me try and have an understanding with these people. This was God, God's grace, His unmerited favor. Verse number 10 of Exodus 34. And the Lord said, Behold, I lay down afresh the terms of the mutual agreement between Israel and me, God. If these children are to succeed, I would rather fall in as God and bring some understanding into their mind. The Bible says that uh, this was a time when Moses. Okay, let's let's go to, get on with this first. And the Lord said, "Behold, in verse number ten, I lay down afresh the terms of the mutual agreement between Israel and me, a covenant before." All your people, I will do marvelous, wondrous miracles such as have not been wrought or created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are, whom are, shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing, fearful and full of awe, that I will do with you. Observe what I command. Observe what I teach you. Observe what I command you this day. Because uh, I am the first and the last. And I will demolish the empire of the enemy. Only if you obey what I command you, you shall be born of the Spirit, and you shall be an overcomer. You shall visit the empire of the enemy forces and destroy it. Exodus chapter 34, verse number 10. And the Lord said, Behold, I lay down afresh the terms of the mutual agreement between Israel and me. A covenant. Before all your people, I will do marvelous, wondrous miracles such as have not been wrought or created in all the earth or in any nation and all the people among whom you are, sh whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing, fearful and full of awe, that I will do with you. Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I drive before you. I'm destroying the empire before you. The empire of the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. This was an empire. If you come back a little bit into scripture, you realize that the Lord said to Moses, 
cut two temple stones. Like the first. Ngea hulinga wana machama bilate mwapa lile. Wabulala. Cut the two and come up the mountain. It was no longer easy for Moses. Come on top of the mountain. I give you tablets of stones written with my finger. But because you have destroyed them, cut them right down there and pick them up. Come up the mountain. And I will write upon these tablets the words that were on the first tablet. That does not change. The words which were on the first tablets, I will still write them on this tablet. Which you broke. Be ready and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountains. And no man shall come up with you Neither let any man be seen throughout all the mountain. Neither let flocks or herds feed before the mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first. And he rose up early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai. As the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand two tablets of stone. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Keeping mercy, loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses made haste to bow his head towards the earth and worship. God laid afresh the terms that you and me we may be saved. He says, I'm destroying this empire before you. The empire of the Amorites, of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant of mutual agreement with the inhabitants of the land. As we grew, there are people who made agreement agreements with the inhabitants of the land. With the inhabitants of the community. They worshipped what they are worshipping. They followed what those people were doing. But God says, you shall Destroy their altars. Whatever shrines have been put in place. Empires which have been put in place. Verse number 13 says, But you shall destroy their altars. Destroyed by you. Dash in pieces their pillars. Images. And cut down their asherim. Bring down their Asherim. I know Asherah is another subject. Very few people will teach you about the Asherah. Underwater spirits. The strongest kingdom. Usina mwe maziva. Chisaka unuona ni. Unosho pera ni. Kutiuti uze namba za mafoni nezo kawanda. Unge uni mwe mvura. What has God to do with my mobile number? 
What has got to do with my underneath dressing? What has got to do with my cupboards in my, in my home? Did he die for cupboards and beds? Jesus has nothing to do with that. He is concerned about your soul. If you make an agreement, if, you make, if people make agreements with these forces, they live in that generation. They don't go away. But yet God making, a, making mutual agreement with the house of Israel, he says, look, I'm destroying this empire and as from now onwards, you shall not either worship what they worship, but you shall destroy their altars, dash in pieces their pillars, images, and cut down their ushering, symbols of the goddess of Asherah. The goddess of Asherah. The goddess of Asherah. Female deity underwater. Lapawizimara. Most of the tongues, that's where they are coming from. Tongues are scriptural. Tongues are biblical. Tongues are ordained. But the devil has taken advantage of that. Anyway, let's put that aside. Demolishing the empire of the enemy. That's where we are. God has chosen you and approved you as his chosen instrument. You listening to this gospel, God is instructing you to pick yourself up and march towards the empire of the devil when you are kitted with the truth, the power. Get there and destroy. Be not afraid of them. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. I'll set you free. Approach this empire with the truth. It's easy to deal with the demonic structures of Lucifer. Because Lucifer is the key. That's why God left the throne. Because Jesus knew that on our own we will never make it. But for you to overcome in this, you must be dressed in truth. You must know the truth. Jeremiah was lifted up by God. To approach these things, to uproot, to bring down, be born of the Spirit, be born of God, and destroy the empire of the devil. I pray that you have an understanding that once you are born of the Spirit, you are an overcomer. You will destroy the empire. You will end up not only dealing with the demon, but the actual empire. Altars of Baalism. The Asherah. You will destroy this. Only when you have been given the truth. Corona is coming out. We know that. I'm not a prophet. South Africa, get ready. Botswana, get ready. Zimbabwe, get ready. God loves you. God has seen how much you are afflicted. Botswana, get ready. Zimbabwe, get ready. South Africa get ready. In the name of Jesus. Your time has come. 
that you destroy the empire which was planted in your generations. Hundred years before you were born. May God bless you. May God keep you strong. Believe in God. The gospel is real. The gospel is powerful. The gospel is the food of the spirit. Eat the word and drink the blood. The blood of Jesus. Without his spirit, we'll never make it. May God bless you. In the name of God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Thank you. We'll meet in another service. Thank you.